One thing I often share in my workshops with teachers is that although you can't make a student behave, you can motivate them to better, more responsible and positive student behaviors. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why motivation is the way to go and how you can use it in your classroom coming up next. Hey everybody, Michelle Holiday here. I am a behavior strategist and I help teachers, schools, districts, and student-based organizations with strategies, tips, and systems on how to manage their classroom, learning environment, and students with less stress and less struggle. And today we're talking all about student motivation. As I first started out as a teacher, I want to be real with you. My method of making students behave was primarily consequences and punishment. Partly because that's what I saw as a student growing up and that's what I saw other teachers doing and it worked for a little bit. The whole thing of only using consequences as a way to shape behavior was not working out and it was actually making it harder on me than the students. So I had to figure out another way to get students to follow directions, listen, do their work, and all the other behaviors that come with being a successful student. And although I had learned some of this at school, being able to implement it in real world classrooms was a learning curve for me. So first let's talk about what is student motivation. Student motivation is all about what inspires and drives the student to get involved in learning and keep trying to succeed. It's important for classroom management because if your students are genuinely involved in participating in your class lessons, they have less time to misbehave and do other things that distract the rest of the classroom. And let's face it, when your students have their own sense of motivation to do well in school, it makes it so much easier for you as the teacher. Now, here's some key things. Motivation can be positive and it can be negative because motivation is something that can be added or taken away from a situation or a person. When I first started teaching, I was all about taking, what can I take away? What can I keep them from doing? Hoping that by doing those things, it would motivate them to make better choices. And let me be clear, sometimes that is effective, but I was out of balance because all of the strategies and tools I had in my toolbox were based on taking away or doing something negative. I actually had to flip the script and focus more on what can I add to the student experience? What can I bring into my classroom that will help motivate the students? It didn't mean that I took away my consequences, but I had more reinforcers and incentives to keep my students motivated to make better behavior choices. Now that you know what motivation is, let's talk about how do you add it to your classroom? First thing you do is you change your mindset. I had to flip my mindset to say, okay, what I've been doing before has not been working. So I need to do it differently. Based on who you are as a teacher, this can be a huge change for you, or this can be a smaller, more specific change. For me, I had to flip the mindset from punish, punish, consequence, consequence to what can I do to motivate my students to make a better behavior choice? Number two, once you change your mindset, now it's time to look at what do you have in your hand? Meaning, what do you have access to that you can add to your classroom or add to your students' experience that will help motivate them? If you're not sure what to do, I would start off with a survey or a class meeting to see what motivates your students. Now, depending on your class, you're going to get some really fun or outlandish requests. That's okay. Allow those to come in. But listen carefully to requests or ideas that you actually can do in your classroom. And let me just say this, for free or for cheap. And you don't have to have 15 different options. I think a core of three to five options should do really well in the classroom, especially in the beginning. When I started, I really did try to do all of the reward jars and the different tangible items, but pretty soon that got pricey. So I had to change things around to activity or time-based incentives and rewards. And I love those types of reinforcers or motivators because they are free and it is something that you can control as CEO of your classroom. Step number three is to customize your motivators. That means take a look at what will work in your classroom. So whether you are an elementary classroom and you have the same students all day, maybe you are a specials teacher like art or PE where your students may rotate throughout the week, but look at what would realistically work in your classroom. 
When I started, I had a very limited time block where I could use some of my reinforcers. So I had to use what was realistic for my classroom. You may have to look at your schedule and say, okay, where are blocks of time that I can use these reinforcers? Or during what activity, like transition, can I reinforce my students for their positive and appropriate behavior? Step number four, implement. So whether you come up with individual motivators, whole class motivators, or my favorite, a mix. Some of my students need more individual motivators. Others work well with group motivators, but begin to implement it into your, your classroom. Consistency is the key here. So make sure it's something that you can use on a regular basis consistently, because if you only use it for two weeks and you drop off, you're not going to see the results you need to see, which brings me into step number five, which is watch for the results. You can think that your idea is so great. This motivational thing that I have is so awesome. This will work. But watch the results. That's what's going to tell you whether your motivators are helpful and effective or not. So what do I mean by watch for results? What you're going to look for is has the behavior decreased? Not necessarily has it gone away, but have you seen a decrease in behavior? Have you seen an increase in the behavior you want to see? Is it easy for you to implement or is it a grind every time you try to do it? All of those things matter when it comes to implementing motivators in your classroom. So there you have it, five steps to implementing student motivators in your classroom. Number one, change your mindset. Number two, take a look at what's in your hand or what you have access to. Number three, customize them so they work realistically for your classroom or learning environment. Number four, actually implement it and do it consistently. And number five, watch for the results. The results will let you know whether you should continue or discontinue or do some kind of tweaking when it comes to motivating students. Student motivation. This is one of the core principles of how you have effective classroom management. Because again, you can't make your students behave, but you can motivate them to positive, appropriate, and responsible student behaviors. If you have any questions about student motivators, leave it in the comment below. Also check the links below because I have some free workshops and some teacher price workshops that really would help you manage behaviors in the first month of school and for the rest of the school year. See you in the next video. Thank you.